So the last part of our 808 operator patch that we're gonna edit to uh, create our 808s is the filter section. So in operator, our filter section is located here. The filter is the key component in what we call subtractive synthesis. This, a filter is going to subtract or EQ out different parts, uh, different harmonics that we've created using our oscillators. What we want to use for our 808 patch is a low pass filter, another name for a high cut filter. And we want to experiment with some of these different filter uh, algorithms that Ableton Live has implemented into its filters. Um, these different algorithms are modeled after different analog synthesizers that are out there. Um, for instance, the MS series by Korg or the Prodigy um, series. And uh, they do sound really great. And they also afford us this filter drive knob, which we'll get to in just a second. But first, let's go ahead and set up our envelope for uh, our filter. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take our filter's frequency way down. And let's jump over to the envelope tab. Currently we're looking just at the filter. Here's the envelope right there. This envelope is attached to the filter cutoff knob. I'm going to go ahead here to the envelope part here and go ahead and turn that up a bit. Turn it up to an arbitrary value somewhere around 60 or 50%. Looks good. And let's go ahead and recreate that same envelope that we've been using this whole time. So now what essentially is happening here is our filter knob is starting off higher and then quickly run, uh, jumping down to this value that we've set it at here. The very bottom line here, the very bottom of this envelope graph is the current position of our knob. So anything above that knob is going to move the knob up, anything, uh, and then back to the original position. So if we play this, we should be able to hear it. I'm gonna move that down just a little bit more. So you can hear we're kind of getting a pop there. I can, again, mess around with this decay time to get some different uh, variations. So real poppy sort of attack there, or move it out to get a longer uh, release. And I, speaking of the release, I probably want to push that up a little bit just so it's a nice smooth ending to our 808. Um, another thing you might want to experiment with is changing it to a 12 dB per octave cutoff or a 24 dB per octave cutoff. If we look at our filter, essentially this is just, this is the slope of how many harmonics it's subtracting per octave. So really steep or not so steep and nice and smooth. I prefer 12 dBs per octave myself, but you can experiment with that. So um, now that we've got our basic filter setup going here, let's go ahead and experiment with this filter drive knob a bit and see what we get. If we turn our drive way up, we can get all sorts of different harmonics. However, at this point, the filter drive is adding volume to our sound. And you'll notice that our track is starting to clip. Um, it's 7 dBs above what it should be. You can see that here as well in the master. Um, one great thing about Ableton Live is that um, any, using any of the native devices, any of the devices that come with Ableton Live, um, since it's a 64-bit or 32-bit application, that means it processes all of the audio in 64 bits, meaning that we have very little chance or it's very, very difficult to actually peek out our audio. The places that we do not want to peek are going into or coming out of third-party softwares or leaving our master track and actually going to the speaker or hardware output. So we want to make sure that we're not peaking coming from our master. So a, a very standard thing to do. And I recommend doing this step one every time you're going to uh, do some sound designing. I've even ha I even have this saved as part of my default Ableton set is to put a limiter from the audio effects folder on your master track. 
Now when we're sound designing, you want to have that limiter on there to be able to protect your ears and protect your speakers. However, we don't ever want it to really be activated. Um, if it becomes activated, then it's essentially turning our sound into a square wave and we're not actually hearing what we're sound designing. So I'm going to go ahead and turn this gain knob down until I do not see any gain reduction happening in the meter here. Currently there should be gain reduction. Let's see it. So that little bit of orange there is gain reduction and that is not going to help our sound designing. So I'm going to go ahead and move this down. I'll move it down about 5, 6 dBs and hopefully that covers our, uh, enough headroom that we're not using our limiter. Let's see. All right, so our limiter's not activating, which is great. Now we're actually hearing exactly what we're sound designing. Great. I'm gonna make sure that I keep coming back to check on this to make sure that I'm not, or I'm not activating this limiter. A great way to keep track of that without having to go to your master track is to look at this little meter right here. This meter is your peak meter of this track. And if this peak meter passes six, I have this set to negative six, if this passes six, then it will activate this limiter. So I'll just keep an eye on that and I can reset it by clicking on it. As long as that doesn't pass six, I'll be in the clear, but you know, more headroom, the better. All right, so back to our uh, operator here. So that's essentially it for our, our basic setup and operator to get our 808 sound. However, um, there are a lot of variations to the 808 sound. Um, so let's go ahead and set up some macro controls so that we can adjust this 808 on the fly. If we look at the original 808, you'll see that each instrument here, these, each one of these is a different instrument. We got kicks, snares, um, and all sorts of different uh, drum sounds. They each have a couple little knobs associated with them. Roland's newer version of the 808 um, drum machine is the TR-8, and you'll see each one has uh, a few knobs as well. The kick drum even has four whole knobs here. Essentially you have a decay, an attack, so some basic envelope controls, tuning controls, um, compression, so gain. Uh, sort of controls. Um, so let's go ahead and in Ableton, we're gonna create some of these basic controls for our 808 maker here. So a rack, uh, there are many, many variations to racks in Ableton Live. Uh, you have audio effects racks, MIDI racks, and instrument racks. And these different racks can uh, combine together multiple devices into one device and allow you to assign macro controls to your sound design process. So um, one way to do this, if we already have an instrument here, is to right click on the instrument and you'll see here that we can group it. Now the hotkey is Command G. I'm going to go ahead and use the hotkey as opposed to clicking in the menu. And you'll see not a whole lot happens, but essentially what we get is this little container. So a menu bar there and, a, and an end container over here for our operator instrument. Now the section of our instrument rack that we want to look at is this little icon there and that'll pull up our macro controls. In Ableton Live we get eight macro controls and these can be assigned to any parameter inside of our, um, inside of our instrument rack. Uh, one macro can also be applied to multiple uh, knobs. So let's go ahead and start assigning some of these key features of our 808. So the first thing I want to assign is, let's go and assign the levels of our, of, of our sub oscillator. So we have the level control right here. We'll assign that to macro one. I also want to be sure to get the decay time of our envelope. So this is going to give us easy access to that, how long our boom lasts and how loud it is. Currently we're just hearing our transient oscillator, but let's turn this up and increase the decay and we should get uh, some control over that. All 
All right, sounds pretty good. Let's do the same controls for our transient oscillator. Um, now you can put these anywhere you want. Um, I'm gonna, let's see, I'll put them down here on macros five and six. To assign a macro, it's as simple as right clicking on the parameter you want. Let's go ahead and grab the level. And again, the decay, and assign it to macro six, great. So now if I wanna change this up, I can get more attack, a longer, You know, some fine-tuned controls over the envelope shapes at least. All right, um, let's go ahead and add some pitch control. Again, I'm gonna do, for this one, let's do pitch amount. So I'll put this, let's see, let's put this on macro three. And again, let's grab that decay time from our pitch envelope. Macro four, great. Now, you'll see that this pitch knob can go from negative 100% to 100%. And in our kick drum, we probably don't want it anywhere in the negative range. We'll end up with something like this. So let's go ahead and move that up to at least zero or into the positive range. All right, sounding good. Let's go ahead and get these filter controls going here. <clears throat> For the filter control, um, I like to grab the filter cutoff and the filter drive. You might have to go in and adjust your envelope percentage a little bit, uh, depending on what sound you're looking for. Oh, I'm clipping there, so let's go ahead and go to our master and turn our limiter down a bit, turn that gain. Let's go to nine since we're gonna, we might get a little loud here. I'll go ahead and just do some basic gain structuring here. Good gain structuring is really important when you're doing sound design or any sort of audio mixing or editing. Make sure that you're not clipping anywhere, that way you're hearing exactly what you're actually creating. So I'll put this, master volume knob down to, let's put it down to negative six. All right, we got some nice gain structuring going on there. All right, now I highly encourage you guys to go ahead and play with all these knobs and get as many different variations of 808s as possible. Um, anything that we've talked about in here, including waveforms or, um, some envelope controls, even adding other oscillators into the mix here can be a good idea. Infinite variations to this boomy kick drum sound that you can get. If you're a music producer, subscribe to our channel and stay up to date on the latest PureMind tutorial videos, track breakdowns, elite sessions, and more. Visit us at PureMind.com.